Welcome to another Debaco University video. In this video lecture, we're going to be learning about identifying cannabis plant anatomy. Some you might be familiar with, like the picture here of this nice uh, female bud, but we're going to get into some of the other details that you might have seen before, but maybe not familiar with their actual terminology. So first off, if you want to learn a little bit more, I have this link to this reference article here and cited here. I will use some aspects of it in this presentation, but there's even more detail provided there. So first off, I want to talk about rooted cutting. Now, rooted cuttings are a simple form of vegetative propagation. And we see the example here, exhibit A, with the rooted cutting about two weeks after rooting. And this bar represents 10 centimeters for a size orientation. Now, other cuttings, they don't all have to look like this. This is an example here of some other rooted cuttings. Now, these are vegetative propagation, meaning these are what a lot of growers refer to as clones. These are genetic copies of the mother or stock plant. Going to carry on those same terpene profiles, those same cannabinoids as the mother plant, and it's a great way to ensure genetic consistency. Then we also have the internode of the cannabis plant. So there's a lot of terms here. We have uh, the, the shoot that kind of comes out to the side. It's called the axillary shoot. We see that located right here. Two bracts, and there's kind of the areas that kind of like little that branch out. And we have two solitary flowers in this image. We have a solitary flower here on the right hand side and another one here on the left. Now, this is all located at the node here where the um, axle um, leaf kind of comes in here. The kind of the uh, petiole of the leaf enters at the node here. And this would ultimately kind of lead to one of the true or fan leaves here. Now in this image, the bar represents about um, two tenths of a centimeter. Just to give you another orientation, another picture showing the same general area, we can see a lot of the same anatomy features located right here. Keep in mind the distance between two nodes is called the internode space. When the plant stretches, the spacing of the internodes increases. Then we get to the cotyledons, and these are the embryonic or seed leaves, which are the first two leaves to appear from a germinating seed. They tend to be more rounder in appearance. We can see them clearly evident here. Uh, and it's kind of a nice little way to kind of see that little seedling come up. And that seedling can kind of go through and be those first leaves to start capturing the sun. So it can start to go through the photosynthetic process. So it can start growing exponentially. Now, after those cotyledons or seed leaves go by, we get into what we call true leaves. Now, true leaves, as you see, here's our two seed leaves or cotyledons. These would be our first, our next two leaves, these would be our true leaves. And true leaves are basically any leaves of a seed plant other than the cotyledons. So these um, second and uh, th sorry, these third and fourth leaves right here, and everything after that would be considered true leaves. Now, when they get older, they kind of look like this, and higher up in the plant, a lot of growers will refer to them as fan leaves. It's just a further classification of true leaves. Then we get into sugar leaves. These leaves kind of uh, grow out of the bud and have many trichomes on them. And it's the trichomes that give the appearance of the sugar on the leaves. If you've kind of cooked something and you can't put powdered sugar on it, it kind of looks like that same appearance. This is why they get the term sugar leaves, is it looks like you've kind of took that powdered sugar and lightly coated it. What you're actually looking at there is a series, a, a density of trichomes. Then we get male and female pre-flowers. So the male flowers, they produce the pollen. We can see those right here. They want to look for these kind of pronounced sac-like flower structures. In comparison, the female pre-flowers located right below me here, these will ultimately produce the cannabinoids and or seeds if they get pollinated. You want to look for these fine little wispy white hairs called the stigmas. Now you want to hear the term stigma, I think of sticky stigma, the reason why they have these little like even finer hairs on them is this structure would be responsible for capturing pollen for the plant. Then we get something called popcorn buds. Now, popcorn buds get their name simply because they're similar size to a popcorn kernel. These are B-grade buds due to the overall size of those buds, and the potency will be similar, though slightly lower than A-grade buds produced on the same plant. They're often uh, offered at a reduced price if you're looking at purchasing them due to their lack of visual impact compared to those large um, A-grade buds there that are getting the maximum amount of light and have the maximum amount of terpenes and cannabinoids in them. Then we get to those trichomes that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Here we see kind of a focus on them, and they are hair-like outgrowths that are the site of cannabinoid, terpene, and flavonoid production. That kind of zoomed out look, kind of see how they get the term, those sugar leaves co coated with those trichomes. As we zoom a little bit closer, closer, and closer, you can see they're kind of like clear to whitish uh, mushroom-like structures. And again, this is where you're going to find your cannabinoids and terpenes and flavonoids. It's going to be kind of condensed in the plant, so they're going to store them. 
We have a calyx structure, and this is found in all flowering plants, and it's the first part of the flower that forms. It's composed of a collection of small leaves called sepals that form near uh, where the flower meets the stem, and we can see that it is ev evident right here. It provides stability to the flower and creates protective structure for the reproductive organs of the plant. Then we go back to the stigma here, kind of looking a little bit more of a zoomed in, kind of a, a stereoscope image of developing female flowers. And we can see those stigmas here on a premature stigma here, just starting to kind of develop and come out. Here's a fully mature, you can see it much larger and even like small little fine hairs, because remember it is again responsible for capturing the pollen. A little bit of a macroscopic scale, we can see here kind of those uh, stigmas there that are produced again on high concentrations in those female flowers, because they're gonna be responsible as the plant's trying to do that to increase the odds that it will intercept pollen floating in the air. They have the early female preflower, so we have this stipule here. That calyx that I mentioned earlier, again, this image located right here. Then we have the uh, pistil here, in which includes the stigma, and then the stipule right here. And this is a small leaf-like appendage of a leaf, typically born in pairs at the base of a leaf stalk. So again, might be something you see in pairs, again, looking at that node region of a particular plant. Then the apical portion of the main shoot, the apical part of the shoot, here is five days after transition to a short photo period. And we see that here, and again, this bar represents half a centimeter. This apical area, uh, this shortly after a short photo period, is gonna induce flowering. And we can see here that this plant is female because we notice the induction of female flowers being produced. And then lastly, we have the shoot apex, and this is kind of image D and E here. They're about 11 to 12 days of growth under short photo period, inducing that flowering in the plant. And that apex uh, phase determined by the first day of visible inflorescence, that first day of a visible flower. These bars represent half a centimeter. And looking here again, that apex, that region here, particularly that top of the plant, is going to be where a lot of cell division occurs. It's a meristematic region, and it's going to be our site of that flower production. So hopefully this provides you with some details about general cannabis ana anatomy of the plant.